a lot of times I get people that'll send me a comment to tell you that I'm spending too much time in just reading, studying, using the Greek, using the Hebrew, going too far to the word. And I want to say so bad, and now I'm going to say it, how much I do not respect your walk. Why is that? It may sound a little bit tough, but I can't respect a person that calls himself a Christian who doesn't respect the word enough to regard it as high as it should be. That's the problem. Do not tell me how much you love the Lord, how spiritual you are, how much you love the Holy Spirit, when you don't even respect what the Holy Spirit gave us, which is his word. Think about it. It makes absolutely no sense for you to say how much you love the Lord, how much of the Holy Spirit you have, and you want to be led by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit gave us something to lead us, which is his word. What you're really saying, whether you know it or not, is that you are on Satan's side, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Think about this. If Satan would try this with Eve, take the word, twist the word, tries this with Eve. Is that what God said? That's not really what God said. He said that to Eve and it was so effective that she even gave the fruit to her husband who also knew God's word and they both failed. And if Satan would twist the word or try to twist the word with Jesus, you know, Jesus, the one who created Satan, the one who made him, you know, Jesus, the one who is God. If he would do that with the Lord and try to twist the words with him, the, his own very words, what do you think he's going to do with somebody like you? If he would try to convince someone who literally saw God early on and was without sin and then even attempted with Jesus, who is God, why would he not try to twist the word with you? That's why we've got these scriptures that tells us to guard the word in our heart. Now, I know it's going to bother some of you folks who want to lean on the spirit only and not go to his word, but let's go to the word. Notice what he says here in Proverbs 4.20. He says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And this word here for keep is the Hebrew word shamar. I know it's a crime that I'm actually looking at the Hebrew, but this word shamar means to keep or to guard. You know what it means to guard, right? To protect it. That's what he wants you to do with the word. Notice also in Psalm 119, 11, he says, your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. This word for treasure is the Hebrew word for sapan. It means to, to treasure, to keep, to hide. That's what we're supposed to do with the word. And I'm not making light of leaning on the Holy Spirit, but you think that every little emotional move that you have is the Holy Spirit, but you don't know how to test the spirit. Jesus did tell us through John not every spirit is the spirit, so test it. Not every spirit is from God, but test it. How? By the word. That's why he tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Look what he says, guys. Those of you who think that we study or spend too much time in the word, accurately handling the word of truth. That's why he gave it to us. We all got the exact same word, in common. I don't have any more of the word to, at my disposal. You don't have any more of the word. We've got it equally. All 66 books we have at our disposal. And even if you don't know Hebrew or Greek, you've got tools where you can go and just hear what the word actually means. You can find out what the tense, the mood, and the verb is in Greek. You can understand what declension is, whether it's a noun or not. You can find all these things out, but you don't want to. Why? Because you want to be more spiritual than you want to be studied. Even though Peter says to desire the word like babies, like newborn baby desire pure milk, that's not enough for you. But I want to leave this with you that Paul left with us. This is on Paul's dying day. This is on Paul's deathbed. Notice what he says in 2 Timothy 4, 6. He says, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. So he is dying. He knows he's going to die. He says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And I want to focus on this before we leave. I have kept the faith. Now we're going to offend some more people because we're going to look at the Greek. He said, I've kept the faith. The word for kept here is the Greek word tetereka, which means to keep, to guard, just like we saw in the Old Testament, to guard the word in your heart. He says, I have kept it, but kept what? Well, the faith, not kept believing. No, he, I, I have kept the faith. This is a noun. Tain pistain, which is, I have kept the tenets of the faith. I have kept literally what the word has told me. Not some sort of spiritual feeling, man. I'm not negating the spirit, but the point is, it's the spirit who gave us the words. It's how we know what the faith is. 
by what the Spirit gave us. Do not minimize his word because that's all we have. The one thing I can count on is not my feelings, it's not your feelings or your experience. The one thing I can count on is his word. And if you're going to tell me that I'm spending too much time studying the word, then I, sus then I have a real suspicion about your walk. Why? Because your walk is based on you and your feelings and your emotions rather than God's unadulterated word.